Um, so, 5B colour, what we're going to do in this section, so the, uh, the next part of chapter 5 after ray diagrams is looking specifically at colour, uh, what it is, so essentially what is colour, why do different objects appear to be certain colours for example, so obviously you've got quite a range of colours in this image uh, as it is, so uh, let's say this is orange, why does this orange look orange to us, whereas this section looks blue, why is the screen white? how come the pen or the ink itself is black or what is black as a colour as well. So a little bit about what colour is in general and how it works. Um, before we get into the colour specifically, there are two things that we need to know as well uh, for this part, which is um, the two types of reflection that can occur. So we already looked at ray diagrams and how we draw the ray diagrams and what, the, what happens to the light or the waves when they cross a boundary or enter a boundary. Um, so we know the law of reflection, which because we said the incident angle of light when it enters a boundary is equal to the reflected angle uh, when it leaves the boundary, so it bounces off at the same angle as it entered. But there are actually two specific types of reflection that can take place, and that actually depends on the surface or the type of surface that the, the light or the waves are entering when the reflection, uh, refraction occurs. So the first one is known as diffuse reflection, okay? And diffuse reflection essentially happens on surfaces that are rough. But what you have to be careful of, uh, of is rough doesn't necessarily mean rough to us as we touch them. So if I actually um, feel this table, um, it feels smooth to my hand. So I might say, oh, well, this is not diffuse reflection, then it must be uh, the, the other type, because this is not a rough surface. But actually, what we're saying is to light, which is an incredibly small, massless um, wave, if you want, or particle. Um, what this surface might feel like to light is actually quite a rough surface. So if you look, if we actually zoomed in on the microscopic scale of this surface, to our hand, it's smooth. But if you really look at it in detail, it may actually be quite a rough um, surface to light rays that are entering, all right? So to the light waves, most surfaces actually are rough surfaces, okay? So diffuse reflection is actually the most common type of reflection that takes place. Anything that you can see, if you're looking at anything around you, other than very few surfaces, which I'll discuss straight after, is diffuse reflection. And what's happening is, as you see, the blue rays that are coming in, they're coming in nice and parallel, they're even rays, they hit the surface, but you've got different grooves at different points. It's almost like a mountain range of a surface and as the light hits this part it can't actually just reflect smoothly off in the same direction it gets scattered if you want in different directions okay and that's because of the structure itself the surface itself is actually rough to light okay so this is diffuse reflection where light comes in and gets scattered in multiple directions now this is not a bad thing actually because if we think about the applications of diffuse reflection the fact that you can see so many different objects from so many different angles is the reason that you can see them, okay? This is the reason, diffuse reflection. So I can see objects on the back wall now, for example, from this direction, but also someone standing over there would look at the wall and also see the same wall from the light that's coming from the ceiling. Now, because it's been scattered in many directions, you can see objects from different directions. But on the other hand, if the reflection were not diffuse reflection, but it was actually specular reflection, which takes place on smooth surfaces, and again, smooth meaning smooth for light, which are mirrors. So one of the most common smooth surfaces where specular reflection takes place are mirrors, which again is a very rare occurrence, um, or maybe even glass surfaces sometimes. Um, but what you can see here is that the reflection of light is coming in and it's really perfectly reflecting I equals R, incident equals reflected. So it's smooth reflection in and out in the same direction. However, if I wanted to see the object or the light, that, uh, say it was coming from this direction, I could only see the object from this direction where the light was coming back. Okay, because there is no scattering of light. So whatever object this was or whatever object this is, I can't see it over here because the light isn't being reflected that way. It's only being reflected in the same direction as it came in. So in only one direction could I see this object, but because of diffuse reflection, where the light, let's say the object was over here, or I wanna, the light is coming from over here, but I wanna see this object here, then I could see this object over here because some light was scattered in that direction. I could also see the object over here. So again, if I'm looking at something in a room and I can see it 
but so can that person in that direction. Then diffuse reflection has taken place because the light is being scattered, which means I can see it from multiple directions. So it is not necessarily a negative thing. Okay, and this one is the most common type. Now, what we want to look at in more detail is specifically the color spectrum or the visible spectrum of light. And we know generally that light that we see is white light, and then we've got some objects that are red. You've got red chairs, blue chairs, different colors all over, and then white is obviously the most general color. But if we break that white light down, we've said this already in chapter four, white light we know is made of different frequencies which each have their own color. So red with the longest wavelength, shortest frequency, or lowest frequency through orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. All right, we've got a few more mixtures in there as well, but the core colors of the visible spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Those are the colors of the visible spectrum. Easy way to remember that, Roy G. Biv. Okay, is the most common way nowadays to remember the colors of the visible spectrum. Red, longest wavelength, lowest frequency. Violet has the shortest wavelength, highest frequency. Um, we looked at that when we were looking at refraction through a triangular prism. So these are the colors of the spectrum that we see. Now, why is it then obviously we see white? on the screen, if I'm looking at the screen, or the walls are white, how come the wall looks white? So what we need to introduce is a principle known as differential absorption. So white, we know white is made of all the colors of the visible spectrum, okay? If you have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all together at the same point, then we see that as white light, okay? Now why is this screen or parts of this screen white? Why is the wall white? And what that means is all the colors of the spectrum are entering our eye at the same time, which essentially means this wall, this surface, and this area on the screen is emitting, or this wall is reflecting all the colors of the visible spectrum. They are absorbing nothing. So everything is reflected from a white object. Everything is reflected, nothing is absorbed. Why is this orange actually appearing orange? So what must happen here is orange is part of the visible spectrum. The light has shone onto the orange. It's reflected the orange into your eye. So the reason you can see it is because it is entering your eye. So orange is the only color that entered your eye. Where are all the other colors of the visible? Where's red, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet? They've been absorbed by the orange, assuming that white light was shone onto the orange. Okay, um, why is the frog green? Okay, but it has a white stripe. So the frog is green because green is being reflected by the frog, but all the other colors of the visible spectrum are being absorbed. What we're saying here is you've got a blue butterfly. It's blue because it's reflecting the blue into your eye and it's absorbing all the other colors. Let's take a look at, they've got white spots around it. So white we know reflects all colors. So they're reflecting all the color and absorbing nothing. But then black is obviously, there is no color. I'm not seeing any colors, no light. At these areas on the butterfly's wings where it's black, no color is actually being reflected into your eye. So what's happened is all of the color has been absorbed. So black is not a color. Black is not a color of light that enters your eye. Black is just simply an absence of light. So if you see a section where no light is being reflected into your eye or where everything's being absorbed, then you see that as black, okay? So each different object is reflecting certain colors that you see and absorbing different colors. That is known as differential absorption. So a differential absorption is defined as essentially objects that appear at the color that they are will reflect the color that they appear, but they will absorb all the other colors. Okay, and if it's just single colors such as orange, blue, green, then they only reflect the one color and they absorb all the others. All right. The very, very last part of color that we need to be able to know is how filters work. So a filter, essentially if I held up a filter over the screen and it was red, then you're seeing red. You're only seeing red. What that means is that the filter will only allow the transmission, which means pass through, will only allow the transmission of the color that the filter is. So if we look at this red filter, a red filter will only transmit the color red. What it does is absorbs all the other colors. So a filter is also like differential absorption because different color filters absorb different colors, but they only transmit 
the colour that the filter is. Slightly different to general objects because different objects will absorb different colours but they reflect the colour that they appear. So we've got objects that you see around you, they reflect the light so that you see them as a specific colour and they absorb the other colours. Filters on the other hand, they still absorb all the other colours but they transmit the colour that they are. So there's no reflection taking place in a, in a filter, it is purely transmission or absorption of the colours that the filter is not. All right. Um, red filter only allows red through, it's stopping the blue and the green. Green filter allows or transmits the green, absorbs the others. Blue filter transmits the blue, absorbs the other colours again. Um, a few examples. So if you drew a stick man in green pen, so you have a white page, you draw a stick man on the page in green pen and put a green filter over it, what would you see? Okay, so you have a white page with a green stick man. Now the white page looks white because all the colours are being reflected off the page into your eye. The green stick man will look green because it must be reflecting the green only from the white light and absorbing all the other colours. But then if I place a green filter over the top, then a green filter we know transmits green only. So the white light from the page will only allow green to transmit through. So the whole white page will actually now look green. So it'll be a whole green background because of all the colors of the spectrum that white can reflect. Green uh, filter will only allow the green to transmit through. So the page is green. And then also the stick man, which was green, will still allow the green through. So you'll have a green stick man on a green background, which essentially you will see nothing. You'll just see a whole page of green. Okay. Another example, if you drew a stick man now in red pen and you put a green filter over it, what would you see in this case? All right, so we've got the white page again. We've now got a red stick man. Yep, and we're putting the green filter over again. So again, if you've got a white page with a green filter, then the whole white page will now be green because it will transmit the green only. So you have a large background of green. Then your red stick man, so the red stick man will only reflect red, it can only reflect red, but the green filter will only allow green through. So if the stick man is only reflecting red, which cannot pass through the green filter, then nothing gets through the filter where the red pen is. So to us that would look black. Okay, so what you'll have is, you'll have a, if we've got a green filter over a white page, a green background with a black stick man because no light is being transmitted through the green filter because the stick man was red and red cannot pass through the green filter. And one last example, if you drew a red stick man again with a green hat, so we have a red stick man on a white page, red stick man, green hat, and we put a red filter over this time, what would you see? So start with the background. The background page should be white, but we have a red filter over it, so the whole background is going to be red. So we have a large red background, and the reason the background is red is because the white page, which can reflect everything, only allows the red to transmit through the filter. So only red gets through, so you see all red on the background. The stick man is red, and if a red filter will allow the red stick man to pass through, you'll see a red stick man but on a red background, which means you won't see the stick man, it'll just be a red. And a green hat, but the green hat can't get through the red filter, so that would look black. So all we'll see is a whole green background, basically a green stick man on a green background, um, sorry, a red stick man on a red background, but the green hat will be black. Okay, so you'll see a floating black hat, essentially. All right, so just quickly looking back, the difference between the filters and differential absorption of objects. A filter will only allow the color of the filter to be transmitted. It absorbs all the other colors. And if it absorbs everything, so if no light gets through, then it's black. If all colors are together, it's white, but the filter only allows the color of the filter through. And general objects where differential absorption takes place, if an object looks orange, it's because it has only reflected orange and it absorbed all the other colours of the spectrum. This is differential absorption. And the type of reflection that is taking place on all these objects, because you can see them in multiple directions, must be diffuse reflection. Whereas, alternatively, on mirrors, for example, it could have been specular reflection, but you would only see those in one direction. Okay? Uh, 
and that's it. Just one more example. There are certain colours, if you go a little step further, there are certain colours that you can mix. So an example of a mixture of colours is, it's kind of a purple, but it's a mixture of red and blue, which is known as magenta. Now, if you have a magenta filter, then what that means is that both red and blue can pass through because it's a mixture of two colours. Okay, so a magenta filter will actually allow red and blue to pass through. Now, if you had a magenta filter with white light, then it would allow, if we get there, it would allow both red and blue to pass through. But if I now put a blue filter here, and magenta which is made of red and blue, if I put a blue filter here, then the blue would go through, but it would stop the red. Okay, so you can have mixtures of colours that can pass through and then be stopped. One other thing to note, actually, if you place a different colour filter on top of another, so if I have a blue filter which allows the blue through, but I put a green filter over the top, no light will pass through. Because if I have a blue filter which only allowed blue through, and then I place a green filter here, well, there is no green to pass through. So two filters of different colour will not let any light through, you will only see black. Because the first filter only allowed one colour, and the second filter, which is a different colour, will stop that light. The only way that you could get two filters of different colour on top of one another and light still goes through both, is if you start with a filter that is a mixture. So a magenta filter here, if you start with white light, magenta, you let red and blue through, then put a blue filter there, then just the blue would go through. Okay, but if you have two filters of single colour, blue and green, blue and yellow, yellow and green, red and blue, any of the colours of the spectrum, red, orange, you place those two filters on top of one another, then whatever light started before the first filter, even if it was white, it will not pass through after the second, so you will always see black with two filters of single colour on top of one another because the first filter absorbs everything, it just allows the one colour through and then you have your second filter which is a different colour and then it stops all the other colours so then it's black. Alright? And that's essentially everything for 5B.